the stories, and they're not really stories, they're life. It's your life, uh, are heartbreaking. We have mm. with us, this is, we should first introduce uh, the victim of the vaccine. This is Stephen Wright. He was a doctor. Uh, and poor Charlotte here uh, was married to Stephen, the love of her life. They've got two small sons. And Charlotte is a widow at 32. It's anyone who's uh, lost the love of their life knows it's a tough break to be widowed when you're 92. But to lose half a century you were entitled to is terrible. And, and uh, next to Charlotte, we have Stephen's mother, Annie. And we all know it to lose, for a parent to outlive a child, offends against the natural order. And to lose... A talented uh, man like that at 32 is just an awful thing. Tell us a bit about your son, Annie. My name's Anne, actually. I just oh. use Annie on Twitter. Oh, do you just <laughs> use Annie on Twitter? OK, I didn't My want to... Anne. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want... I didn't... No, I've been right. overly intimate now. I went, <laughs> no, I went straight to Annie and no-one's ever called you that before. I do apologise. <laughs> actually, my brothers do. Oh, your brothers do. Oh, OK, OK. I, I can't say was because he's my son. Stephen... Hmm is an amazing person. He was kind, he was caring, he was funny, he was a great son, he was a great husband, great brother, great dad, and he was just everything anyone should be. He just was just a perfect person. And I know he had his faults, you know, like anyone, but he was Not just... Many. No, he was just amazing. Um, he loved the... The children he worked for, he loved his job as a clinical psychologist and he really cared about the children he was and young people that he was looking after. And he took the job because he thought he would be protecting them because they were vulnerable. Yeah. And he thought, you know, he had no fear for himself because he was young, he was fit, he was mm. healthy, he was only 32. And it turned out, you know within 10 days he had died of the vaccine and it's like you say it's just the cruelest thing for a mother to lose and no. a father my son, husband as well and his sister and to charlotte and his sons no. it's just so cruel such a terrible thing a, a, a talented man he'd just taken yeah. a job at uh, great ormond street hospital yes. and he has the distinction according to uh, at, at least one doctor who uh, knew him, of being the first person on the planet to die of the yes, COVID yes. vaccine. Yes. How do you feel? Because I'm astonished at the cruelty of people on the internet, Charlotte, mm -hmm. that you, you post a little clip of uh, you coming on GB News and talking about your husband, mm -hmm. and immediately it gets labelled as misinformation. Mm -hmm. And there's the fact, supposed fact checkers say it's not true, as if they've gone round to your house, knocked mm -hmm. on your door, and confirmed that you are a widow. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about the way the media and social media have reacted to this? Well, I think it's, I, I think it's such a, a an astonish, astonishing thing to say to see misinformation when. It's the truth. I mean, you can't and, and you can't say anything. You can't like there's no one to speak to mm. about why this little banner is here. Um, why does it say it? who is putting this here? I can give you his death certificate if you would like to see it. Um, you know, it's not misinformation. What do you what do you think of uh, that, Dan? Because it's adding literal insult to injury. You lose your husband. You're bringing up. To, there's that heartbreaking picture that's on your Twitter feed of your little boy yeah. touching his father's coffin, and there's all, and yet there's all these people scoffing and claiming that this is just some anti-vax conspiracy theory. I, mean, I think it's despicable. I think it's utterly despicable. I think big tech have been a massive issue throughout this entire pandemic. But I'm sorry, you cannot literally use the word anti-vax about any human being in this room <laughs> because the point is they are vaccine injured. They listen to the government. Mm -hmm. They listen to the experts. They listen to Facebook. They listen to Elmo on Sesame Street. They listen to all of these people who said take the vaccine. There is no risk. Mm -hmm. They are not anti-vaxxers. They, mm -hmm. they are victims of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's an important way to put it because mm, yes. as, as you were saying, Anne, he's 32. He has no medical reason to take it. No. He took it 
as you said, to protect, because if, mm. if you're a doctor, you've got random people coming in and out of your office all day. So he took it yes. so that he wasn't a threat to them. And it turns out that's, that's rubbish. The triple vaccinated are infecting each other back and forth. Yes. He, had, he had, I mean, this must be really painful, Charlotte, that he died because of a medical procedure he never needed to take. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I think every day that he... It, had he waited until his age group, AstraZeneca would have been pulled. It was pulled for under 30s and it mm. was pulled for under 40s. And the only reason he had it so soon was because he was a doctor. So mm. had he been unemployed, he would still be here. Mm. Yeah. But of Which course, is, would, Sajid Javid did threaten, didn't yeah, he, to, did. to yes. take jobs yeah. away yeah. Mm -hmm. from anyone working in the NHS who mm -hmm. refused to have the yes. vaccine. Mm -hmm. Again, this is unprecedented, that people are being asked to take a medication uh, simply in order to remain in employment. Mm. Um, and, it's, mm. uh, and it's a terrible, uh, it's a terrible business.